When you look up at the moon, just remember that somewhere on the lunar face, the remains of Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, 16 and 17, along with eight unmanned Russian lunar missions and five pre-Apollo unmanned American surveyor missions are all still there, silently looking back. Unless, of course, you're a NASA non-believer. So why can't we see these from Earth? Why can't we train our best telescopes onto the Moon's surface and see them exactly where we left them the best part of 50 years ago? Well, there's a bit of a problem. And that is that the Moon is 384,000 kilometers or 238,000 miles away. And the landers and all the things left behind are just a few meters across. To give you an idea of just how difficult this problem is, it's like looking for an object the size of a coin from a thousand miles away, or the equivalent of from New York to Florida. So you're gonna need a pretty serious telescope. One telescope which springs to mind is the Hubble Space Telescope. After all, if it can see galaxies billions of light years away, then it should be able to see the Apollo landers easily, shouldn't it? Well, as with many things to do with space, it's not that simple. Yes, the Hubble Space Telescope was indeed designed to look at very faint objects at astronomical distances, but those objects are clusters of galaxies trillions of miles across. It was just not designed to take high resolution images of small objects at fairly close ranges in astronomical terms, like to the moon. The problem is down to the resolution of the images that the telescope can produce, and that is ultimately limited by the law of physics. The resolution determines the smallest picture element or pixel in the image. The higher the resolution, the more the fine detail the image can be seen. In a telescope, the bigger the mirror, the more the magnification, so the closer the object will appear. But at very large magnifications, the image is also affected by the wavelength of light itself. The shorter the wavelength of light, like ultraviolet light, the finer the detail that can be captured and the resolution increases. But in visible light, as we go from blue to green to red, the wavelength increases and the resolution is actually decreased. The Hubble has a mirror which is 2.4 meters in diameter, which was the largest that would fit into the Space Shuttle Bay when it was placed in orbit. This gives it a single pixel resolution in ultraviolet light of about 43 meters across on the Moon's surface. Anything smaller than 43 meters will just be hidden in a single dot, which cannot be resolved any further. In fact, we need really two pixels or more to make out anything at all. In visible light, it's even worse, and the size of the area covered by a single pixel increases to 90 meters. The only way we're gonna see any objects a few meters across on the lunar surface is either to increase the size of a mirror or get closer to the object we're looking at. Back on Earth, the current largest optical telescope in the world is the GTC on the Canary Islands, with a mirror diameter of 10.4 meters. This increases the resolution so that the smallest area covered by one pixel would be 20 meters across in visible light. Still too big to see the Apollo lander, which is just over four meters across. In fact, to see the Apollo landers from Earth, you need a telescope with a mirror size 10 times that of GTC, or about 100 meters across, and that does not yet exist. Even with a 100 meter telescope, that would only give you a two meter resolution coverage, so that the lander would be two pixels in visible light and four pixels in ultraviolet light. Still not enough to discern any real detail. This is the reason why we are unable to see any of the vehicles on the moon from the Earth. And although in theory, it is possible to use a group of telescopes in an array to get a higher resolution. No one has yet done it because telescope time is in very high demand and very limited. And looking for objects that we know already exist is just not a high enough priority just to disprove the non-believers. What we need to do is to put a camera in orbit around the moon, just like the spy satellites or the ones which give us the satellite mapping services like Google Earth, for example. In 2009, that's exactly what happened when the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO, was launched to photograph and survey the moon 
from a distance of between 12 and 100 miles above its surface. Even with a much smaller camera lens, at its closest passes, it has a resolution of just 0.5 meters or 18 inches per pixel. So now all of the Apollo sites with the lunar landers, the rovers, as well as the Russian sites can now be seen for the first time since they landed. This also shows the trails left in the lunar dust by the astronauts, both on foot and in the lunar rovers. The science experiments that were left there over 44 years ago are still visible. And even the shadows of the American flags can be seen as they vary in size with the changing position of the sun during the lunar day. We can't see the flags themselves because they are hanging vertically and the camera is looking in a top-down position. And the flags are just a fraction of an inch thick. So now we have the photographic evidence of the Apollo landers. Unless, of course, you don't believe anything official that comes out of NASA and that they were placed there by robotic landers or aliens years later. Or that the moon is a hologram and the Earth is flat. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy this new format. Let me know in the comments below and as always, please subscribe, rate and share. We also have other videos which you may find interesting on the click more videos link showing now. So it's goodbye from me and I hope you visit again soon.